I know this has been out a little while, but I really wanted to take a look at the Astro City Mini and share my take on it with you guys. I'm sure there are other videos out on this, and for what it's worth, I've avoided watching those while I've played this for a week or so, so I could share some unbiased thoughts with you. As many of you know, I'm also the owner of a real Astro City, and sitting right next to that is an original Virtua Fighter cab, a game making an appearance on the Astro City Mini. As a fan of these originals, I thought I might be able to add some unique perspective to the mix of reviews. I can say that the first thing I liked about this is the packaging kind of has a throwback style to it with it being mostly black and then having the white product pop across the front. It really makes the Astro Green logo and text pop as well. All right, I'll mention this once and I swear I'm going to let it go, pun intended. Upon first inspection, I thought this said Go Sega on the upper left of the box. I wondered if this was used on the Game Gear Micro's marketing as well, like a spin on on the go for something portable. Then I saw the G in Sega was different than what was used for the G in Go. The G in Go has this little curve to it in the bottom right. So then I assumed it was a different character since it was from the same font set. This must be a 60, which makes sense. It says right in the box we're celebrating Sega's 60th anniversary. But checking out Sega's website, no, they clearly call this out as Go Sega. And that's cool and all, I just was confused by using a different character to represent the same letter in a font set. It's not a big deal at all, I don't care one way or the other, but I did find this interesting. Okay, so some other cool subtleties on the packaging that I liked is how the left side of the box uses green and the right side is pink. Even the flaps on the inside are styled this way. This is a nod to how, in general, these candy cabs typically sported green ball tops and buttons on the left, and pink on the right. Eagle Eyes will note that I've gone rogue, and my two-player side is a Seimitsu Special Edition fluorescent yellow. All right, enough of that. The unit itself is a decent size, standing seven inches tall and being almost seven inches from front to back as well. It's also really solid, weighing in at a decent one pound, not quite five ounces. In contrast to this, the Neo Mini weighs just 13 ounces and feels a little more plasticky and light. You'll notice this has a wide screen, which actually to me, it looks worse powered off than it does when it's on. So as a shelf display, this kind of bothers my OCD a bit, but it's probably trivial for most people. When powered up, the system's menu makes full use of the screen, but games themselves, you can use black bars on the sides to give the correct aspect ratio. And this makes the unit present better overall, in my opinion. You'll notice when I have this powered up, the green bar across the top lights up, I'm not sure why they didn't just go for it and have the entire marquee light up. An LED and some translucent plastic here and there would have made this happen relatively cheaply. It would have been cool to see the actual Astro City here in the center illuminate at the very least. On the back of the unit, I do want to call out the effort made on details, including the vents on the back of the marquee, the grip indentations where on an actual Astro City, you can easily grab here, tilt and wheel the cab pretty easily and then the monitor access door. On the very bottom here, obviously not on a real cab, are our power on switch, HDMI out, first and second player USB controller ports, a headphone jack, and mini USB for powering the unit. Okay, the last thing I wanna call out is of course the control panel. I was curious how this was going to stack up to the Neo Geo minis, and I wasn't disappointed. Unlike SNK's miniature arcade offering, Sega went all out and gave you some clicky buttons and stick. Now, purists will note that most candy cab buttons like your Sanwas and Seimitsus aren't click buttons though. So you kind of pick your poison here. Do you want the joy of clicky or a more authentic Astro City mini model? I personally approve of this decision to go clicky, although since I won't be playing it as a tabletop, I suppose it doesn't matter much. For what it's worth, the stick is pretty tight, maybe even a little more so than I'd actually want it to be, but that's better than the alternative. The stick also has a square gate for anyone who is wondering. So let's check out the actual games list, and this is where I think this becomes interesting. I mentioned on the earlier video I did that I really liked the idea of having an arcade classic, a mini dedicated to arcade games. Since the Astro City arcade cabinets were essentially shells for games, Sega was free to put almost anything they wanted on here. 
In other words, there's no wrong game for an Astro City. Sega has taken advantage of that and gives a decade's worth of titles listed chronologically from 1984 through to 1994. Some of the games I'm sure you know well. Games like Altered Beast, Golden Axe, Space Harrier, and then we get into others which aren't as common with maybe mainstream audiences. And I should clarify that by saying there are for certain titles here that are lesser known to some Western audiences. So we have to remember this product, at least for now, is only being marketed in Japan. Overall though, I think Sega did a nice job of offering up a mix of genres here. The 37 games offered definitely give the player variety across action, fighting, shooters, and even puzzle games. I'm not gonna go through each of these games one by one in this video, but I will mention that most of what I played, played pretty well. I did, however, notice some screen shimmering on the vertical shooters, which you can see here. Virtua Fighter also has a weird frame skip thing going on during the action replays. It doesn't always happen, but when it does, it's noticeable. Well, thankfully, it doesn't seem to be present during actual matches. Speaking of Virtua Fighter though, this game looks great on the Astro City Mini. I've seen the intro boot on my arcade machine hundreds of times, but I was in awe watching it in 720p on a flat screen. Now I'm not about to rip the CRT out of my cabinet, but I'd be lying if I didn't say it's never looked better. This is a solid example that demonstrates that most 3D games do in fact look better on a modern display. Virtua Fighter is absolutely gorgeous here. What isn't gorgeous here though? The scan line option that's given with the Astro City Mini. I'm not entirely sure what's going on here. I think that the artificial lines are just too big. It's tough to look at in my opinion and thankfully you can revert to sharp pixels pretty easily. Actually, those are your only two video options here though, which may frustrate some people. Look at it this way though. Sega is protecting you from incorrectly playing these classics stretched out 16 by nine style or with some gross blurry filtering option. Maybe even worse, both. They're teaching you to do things the right way by forcing it on you whether you like it or not. For that, I commend them. Sometimes people just need to be made to do the right thing. I'm only half joking here. Actually, having both true 4.3 and pixel perfect options would have been nice. As far as the UI goes, other notable callouts that I appreciated were the ability to flip between a few screenshots of each game, calling out the type of hardware a game was released on, and having the option to play the background music of some games from the main menu. Another cool thing that's really helpful is that a game's buttons are called out when you select it from the main menu. Some games like Space Harrier have a turbo button assigned, which is nice. And you'll also notice that from this screen, you can choose to start a new game or load one of two available save states. And finally here, I suppose I'll mention, I did pick up the Astro City theme six button controller to play these games. I had modest hopes for this and I think those expectations were actually exceeded. The controller looks pretty slick really dig the design on it and it matches perfectly with the unit as you might expect. The button layout is nice and comfortable and then arguably the most important part of this, the D-pad. It's actually good. It's very much like the D-pad on Sega's original six button controllers. It rolls nicely but gives a satisfying stop when hitting each of the eight ways. What's even better, this is a standard USB connection so the controller can be used on other devices like a Raspberry Pi, I've tried it, it works well, and also, of course, on Mister, and that also works really well. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of luck with the reverse, that is, trying other USB controllers on the Astro City Mini. The PC Engine Mini, PlayStation Classic, and 8-BitDo Super Nintendo-style controllers all failed to work on the Astro City Mini, so I'm glad I picked up the gamepad for use with it and my other devices. And yeah, while we're on the subject of controllers, I did pick up this behemoth as well. I didn't initially order the stick, but regretted that decision soon after the Astro City Mini arrived. Much like the gamepad, I wanted a solid USB arcade stick to use with other devices, and this really fit the bill. I think this almost warrants its own video, so I may choose to do something with this at a later time. For today's purposes, just know that I really like it, but it is expensive to get stateside. 
So overall, I have to say that I'm really pleased with what Sega has done here with the Astro City Mini. It's a rugged and well-made model that is nicely representative of its big brother, even if it has some minor cosmetic shortcomings with the marquee lighting. The LCD is nice and bright, it doesn't show too much motion blur from what little I've played in tabletop mode, and the game list offering is about what I'd expect Sega to come up with for perhaps its most iconic candy cabinet. Playing with this for a little over a week has really piqued my interest in potential follow-ups such as a new Astro City or Blast City Mini. All that said, I can understand why this has only been released in Japan at this point. I don't see a large appeal to mainstream North American gamers. And in fact, you can probably decide whether this is for you by asking yourself just three questions. Are you a big Sega fan? Do you like Japanese candy cabinets or otherwise have nostalgia for them? And finally, would you rate this games list a B plus or higher? If you could answer yes to two of those three questions, you'll probably like the Astro City Mini. Anything less than that, it's probably not worth the $150 it's gonna to cost to import it. For me, I really ended up loving this unit even more than I thought I would. I've had fun playing it, it looks cool as a display piece, and its controllers are really exceptional, even if you're picking them up just to use on other devices. This was a really nice way to close out 2020 for me from a gaming purchasing standpoint. I'm really pleased with this little set. So as always, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will catch you all next time. Later, guys.